game to get to the next level, Lorne and his team will need to get a green light from Microsoft. So it's been a busy time since we've seen you last. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. It's, so. they, they've been keeping this one secret from me for a while. From Good everybody. <laughs> you have very few people that are going, I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is, and I want to see new, creative, different stuff, and I'm willing to pay for it. There's very few of those people out there, and Ed Freeze is one of those people. Munch was like the heartbreak of my life. It was like, it, first of all, just looking at the character. I felt we were in danger of being perceived as Oddworld, the ones who create the underpowered heroes. Right. The like, weaker heroes. Is that heroes. my fantasy to play right. a fish? Exactly. My name is Munch. So when we first start encountering Steve, we find a guy who seems like he's inspired by Sergio Leone <laughs> and the Man With No Name series. I think you better stay out of my way. Yeah, I saw some really early pencil, pencil sketches, and this is different. <laughs> it's Clint Eastwood in many ways, of his persona, of the subtlety, right. of the facial expressions doing most of the dialogue. And what he is, by trade, is he hunts bounties. But what he has is he has a crossbow. Mm. So he'll walk around, and it's all folded up into a, a device on his wrist. I see. And then when he wants, he can... And it, and it folds out, and then... Ching, ching. You know, you gotta prove it's fun. I mean, that's the inescapable goal of the interactive business. If it's not fun, you're dead. It has to be able to get someone like Ed Freeze in five minutes to go, I see how you're gonna build 20 hours of fun out of this one. What he's saying is, I'm gonna shift from sort of a jumping, puzzle-solving mechanic to more of a um, exploring and, and uh, shooting mechanic. So these are the townsfolks, right? And the townsfolk are more like ch chicken bird influences. So I see, okay. So they'd have this kind of very, very arrogant. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we get ourselves a fine meal of pork and beans? And You're doing the voices, speaker. right? I, I think he really wanted to make a Western. That's what I think. I think he really wanted to. Um, I know going into this that, because um, I know the ideas that he was experimenting with, I know he wanted to do a hero's quest. He's something else entirely. Here's the real-time database that we'll be running around. Right? So that's the same guy. Right. This is like after he grew horns. And the horns were still not completely finalized on it. I'd like to do some testing on it. They've got plenty of ideas. They've got more than enough to make a great game there. But can they make that game, you know? So I think part of what you have to do is you have to convince someone like Ed that you believe it. Go over to Munch and you can start. <laughs> you know, you can slap him around, and you, and you can see that in the He's game so as it was. To your character. I know, I know. This is, is like, going to be this, and then there's an element of trust that has to carry along with that. One thing I, I am a little concerned about the Steve out of disguise. If he gets too alien, he loses kind of the human quality to it uh, that makes you kind of relate to him. Maybe I don't know what. Well, I, here's, I'm, here's what I think. I'm not happens. sure exactly what it is. What I wanted was for the audience to get connected to something before they found out what it really was. Yeah. Do you want it to be a little edgy then? Yeah, totally. So when Ed told me, so you want it to be a little edgy, I think what I probably thought was, and so do you. It reminds me why I like to work with you. I mean, because I sit through so many pitches where they, there's just no ideas there. And um, you, you have almost the opposite problem, you know? Yeah. You, know, it, you got a publisher who's giving you a lot of money to make it? something that they expect on time. And so you need to appease that and say, we are on the right track. We are doing well. There are real limitations, too, to how long projects can go and how much money we can spend on them and what makes sense, right? I wanted a way to explain to him why I think he's had some pr trouble in the past. He just We're keeps piling ideas on. Off. You know, and not focusing on deciding what's in and what's out, what we have time for, what we don't, what's good and what's bad. The game won't gel. It won't turn into something that that works. Um, you know, and now is kind of the time. It's like a year before release. We have to start making those painful decisions, and those are painful, really painful for someone like him who's got all these ideas. He's excited about it. That's good in our goal. He needs to be excited about it. And at the same time, he's concerned it might be a little ambitious. That's good. That's a better concern than feeling like it might not be ambitious enough. You hope that your track record helps shine light that it's not insane. <laughs> no. But at the same time, there's a little bit of a madman at the wheel. And that's what you need to win these crazy races. I thought I was going to have another game in the Munch series, and I walk out of here with a first-person Western. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but with tons, tons of great new ideas, and I'm really excited about it. Right on.
That's great. Right on.